this is this topic is as i said it's very interesting every time when i give the lecture and uh, to just to give a brief introduction about myself uh, i did my studied my mtech from iit bombay uh, in the year 1993 and then phd from iit madras in the year 1997 so but i got the opportunity to study this great philosophy the science of knowledge uh, that is bhagavad gita when i was studying my masters in iit bombay so from that subject only that knowledge only i could understand everything about ourselves so who am i so we are going to now let's focus on this topic so now i'm working also here for the last 20 plus years so elements of material nature so let's understand about this material nature so material nature when we say it's material nature that means it is made up of matter so that's why we call it as material nature so matter means we know that now we have periodic table at least in the last century uh, we got the periodic table so so we understand what are all the elements in the periodic table how many periods and groups and uh, especially the second row elements like our body is made up of mainly of course starting with the hydrogen in the very first element and then carbon nitrogen oxygen and then of course sulfur phosphorus and all other elements uh, our body is made up of so um I think uh, rohit prabhu uh, okay he is okay he is called that's fine so i'll just yeah so because i'm trying to uh, get this recorded in zoom so that way let run we can uh, we can see that so <clears throat> here this material nature we need to understand that what is material nature but we think that we are all the time 24 by 7 we think that we are we are made up of matter of course we our body is made up of matter but we have some some of we always think that we are this body that's a problem so we need to we are what we are going to so the, as the topic said that it's a scientific outlook so it's completely based on science whatever i say here everything is based on science because myself being a phd and also working in the engineering industry
So um, that's what we need to understand. Okay. Okay, so now air quarter five A and space. To come out of this speaker. Okay. But do we know about these three material elements? These three nature, material nature. We know that mind, we talk about mind. But how much we know about mind? No one knows much about our mind. So, but we know about mind. We know that we have mind. But that's also a part of this material nature. I would say that it is, it is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subtle nature. So it's, I should not say that it's a part of, even though it's included as a material nature, but uh, uh, it is mind intelligence and false ego, they are basically a part of a subtle body. So that's what we need to understand, but it is very much affected by the material nature, our mind also. So then intelligence. So intelligence also we have. So the real meaning of intelligence is very, very, very much given in this, in this book, Bhagavad Gita. That first of all, to realize about ourself, who am I? And then doing everything based on that knowledge, then it is called intelligence. And then false ego. So that, that means it is false ego means when we say that I, I am doing it, I did it. But really speaking, we didn't do anything. That knowledge we get from this book. Only. We didn't do anything. And when we say that you did it, that's also not correct. I didn't do anything, you didn't do anything. Then who is doing it? So that is, it is very clearly explained about the three modes of material nature. So that's what is the next one, the three modes of material nature. So three modes of material nature, they are doing everything. We are not doing anything. That is the science we need to understand. And what are those three modes of material nature? The mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. So, First time I came to know about this only from this one book, Bhagavad Gita, not from anywhere else. That everyone is influenced, everyone is controlled by these three modes of material nature. So that means if we are influenced by the mode of goodness, we behave good, we are feeling good, and we do great things. But if we are influenced, controlled by the mode of ignorance, so then we are very dumb and we don't do things that great, very nicely and all such things. And if you are in the mode of passion, that is Rajoguna, it's very Rajasic, very passionate. So these three modes of material nature are controlling us. That's what we need to understand from Bhavati. We can find that the same person behaving in a different ways. So each one of us is controlled by these modes of nature, depending upon, in fact, it's very, very highly, highly contagious much worse than this uh, COVID-19 actually. So it is, it can, it can through all, all uh, medias, through electronic media, also the mode of nature can affect us. For example, if you're watching a very violent movie or uh, watching something or even some games or something, you will get affected. The modes of nature, because our, our mind gets affected. So we will be forced to do things depending upon the circumstances, situations. It is not that everyone is actually doing things the way they want but everyone is actually forced to act that's what we need to understand we are not free we are not independent even though we celebrate independence day we are freedom day even though we think that freedom is our our right freedom is our our um, uh, that is one of the amendment also correct freedom is very important but in reality no one is free everyone is controlled by the three modes of material nature. But when we think that I am doing it, even though everything is done by the three modes of material nature, and we think that I am doing it, I am the doer. So at that point of time, we are actually, that is known as false ego. So that's what it is known as false ego. False ego means thinking that I am doing it, I am the doer. But in reality, we are not the doer. 
in reality everything is done by the three modes of material nature that's what we need to understand so now time time is the very important part of this nature we need to understand so these are all part of the material nature so how many we are doing here so 5 plus 3 8 and then plus 1 we can consider it as 3 or 1 the three modes of material nature so now 5 plus 3 8 8 plus 1 9 and then 10 we have and now here with this material nature what else is formed based on this <clears throat> from this earth water fire air and space we are our body our body is made up of earth water fire air and space i already mentioned it's there is no doubt about it it's 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 pure science it's complete science for the body we have what we eat so we are eating food that's why we we know it's a, actually any any food when you buy um, uh, in the in like um, how much calories and everything chart is given and what what vitamins are are our minerals are our carbohydrate fat and um, uh sugar and everything is listed so our body is simply made up of what we are eating it that's it so but we need to understand that in our body we have senses this is basic given in elementary school level they teach that five senses so using this five knowledge acquiring senses that's what we know much so knowledge acquiring senses means you are gaining the knowledge about everything in this world only with these five senses a child who is born and growing and how the child is getting the knowledge about everything even our child she go to classroom and you take a very tough subject and you don't know anything about that and you go to the classroom and you have the books uh, textbooks and then read the books and try to understand and then uh, listen to the professor and try to understand so for that you are using our eyes to see and ears to hear and uh, of course uh, all these uh, uh, knowledge acquiring senses we are using nose to smell and uh, then tongue to taste and then skin to touch so these are the five knowledge acquiring senses in our body and again these knowledge acquiring senses are made up of what it is made up of matter earth water fire air and space correct everything we know in our body we have sense receptors for example for the skin so we have so many receptors different types of receptors are in our skin underneath the skin so it's cutaneous receptors they will sense some receptors will sense the touch and we know that whether it's rough or hard or smooth and all such things and some some sense receptors will sense the temperature and some sense receptors they will sense the pain so all these things pain touch and uh, uh, and some sense receptors even sense the vibration and uh, proprioception so all such things there are there in our skin so they are all the sense receptors and what this those sense receptors are made up of they are made up of simply whatever the elements you see in the periodic table all the biomolecules <coughs> like proteins amino acids uh, and everything if you get into that level even our dna so they are all huge bio molecules but they are made up of only finally this this elements what you see in the periodic table so they play our eyes our eyes has got photoreceptors so it gets in, the, in our retina and uh, the light goes all the way into our retina which is deep inside our eyes and then it senses what kind of light is coming what wavelength it is coming and then uh, it uh, it uh, it receives the signal and then it sends out Uh, the information to the brain so that's why you are seeing the color shape and everything so similarly our ears have got mechano receptors mechanical receptors basically mechano so our ear drum and everything goes inside the hair cells and all such things and similarly our tongue has got chemo receptors so they sense the food what you eat and that's how the taste it sends the uh, signal to the brain that's why you know you are understanding all the different types of taste like sweet Uh, are salty or all such things uh, the receptors are there so now the main point is that all these knowledge acquiring senses are made up of matter there is no doubt right made up of material nature 
and now that is known in our in our body in the neuroscience all these receptors all these sensors they are known as somato sensory system it's very well understood they are all somato sensory system so that means the the whatever we we actually perceive whatever we perceive the signal is going to our brain so that is known as afferent so it's going to the brain so the signals so in our in our brain we have cortex so we have lobes frontal lobe then parietal lobe occipital lobe temporal lobe so we have four lobes are there so in there there is whole region from here to here so uh, there is uh, from the center that is known as sulcus so post central sulcus so post central gyrus so it is actually it's called somato sensory uh, cortex is there all the signals are going there only. whatever when you touch here touch something or when you feel some heat all those things it's all going to our brain so and then we have then in the front front of that thing there is known as precentral gyrus so that is known as motor cortex so that is the working senses the working senses are voice legs hands anus and genitals so that is all the motor cortex so it coming from the brain to the to the hands and legs everything so that is known as efferent so efferent means it's coming from the brain all these senses so when i desire to move my hand from here to here so this action is starting from the brain so that's what we need to understand so from the brain from the motor cortex it is starting here i want to move my hand from here now the the desire the decision is made by me so our frontal lobe does lot of executive actions and this frontal lobe what we have humans only have weak frontal lobe and um, we that's why we are able to do much more things all other animals everything they don't have so that is the difference there is the difference we have we have our frontal lobe so that way with human body with human brain you are doing able to do much more things which other animals they are not able to do because their brain is not uh, desi- designed to do that so now that is known as motor nervous system when i am speaking so i need to move so i need to move my jaw move my lips move my um, uh, like there is vocal cord so all these things together so because i am deciding i want to move i want to speak so i want to communicate so at that time i am able to move so that is what is known as the motor nervous system so i am able to do hands legs and everything so with with the working senses what we are doing we are doing action correct when we act when we act so we are using our working senses with legs we are moving with hands we are doing all the activities so that is what it is known as karmendriyas karmendriyas means karma karma means action so karmendriyas gnanendriyas and karmendriyas gnanendriyas are the knowledge acquiring senses and karmendriyas are the working senses that's what we need to understand and now these working senses are also made up of the matter correct made up of all these elements what you see in the periodic table is there any doubt in that there is no doubt correct so we know very well now our body is made up of matter and our body comes from this earth is produced from this earth from the food what we eat so everything so this body itself is like a automatic machine like a, which has got you know there are a lot of automated machines these days people also say that everything is getting more automatic and uh, people are losing jobs so something like that here we are our body is also so we tend to eat food and we eat so much and we actually gets digested and then the food particles are taken inside and then all the needed our cells are actually dividing and uh, all those things all those mitoses and the meiosis all those things it needs all the uh, things from the food what we eat the energy itself the atp the atp is produced from the food what we eat so the from the sugar basically that's what the atp is produced from the glucose from the glucose only atp is produced so there is a process glycolysis and all such things it goes through uh, electron transport chain so that way we are getting energy to move energy to act all such things now we understood about the five knowledge acquiring senses and five working senses and there are five sense objects that is that are not part of our body the five sense objects for example i am teaching this important very important scientific lecture to you correct who am i 
you know this is a very rare team of uh, team we are trying to explore and understand about the question uh, the answer for the question who am i so here i am actually producing sound so when i speak sound correct so that means this this makes um, the pressure it's a it's a very micro pascal level not the pascals and other things kilo pascal uh, like thing or mega pascal psi and all such things we talk about but it is these fluctuations are in the again it's a fluctuation pressure fluctuations in the media in the air if the air is not there you speak nothing no you cannot hear if you go to the space and if i speak you will not hear so through the medium so then it comes and it goes to our ears and to the tympanic membrane and then there are a lot of things will happen it, it will go to the, our brain it's a very very highly complicated system in our ears and uh, and uh, nose uh, everything it's it's so much very very highly designed so but the sense object so the sense object is for example whatever the sound i am producing right now it's a sense object for all of you and we are receiving the knowledge so similarly when we eat food so we we are going to take prasadam so at the end so that prasadam is a, that food basically it's a sense object for the tongue so like that that sense object is not a part of my body so whatever i'm hearing whatever i'm smelling whatever i'm touching and uh, whatever i am tasting uh, all such things they are all five different sense objects okay so these are all part of our grass body and these are all made up of electrons neutrons protons all such things made up of whatever the elements you see in the periodic table that's what so all together this is known as grass body our body is made up of all those things and our body comes into actually that's what we are going to look at in the next slide so now we understood very clearly that we our body is actually made up of the matter from this earth that's it so now okay this is known as subtle body mind intelligence and falsity because this is beyond the perception of your senses that's why you call it as subtle when you say grass so this you can all perceive with your senses but when i say mind can you see the mind no what color it is what shape it is you cannot you cannot see the mind so that is beyond the perception of the senses but still we say that i mean i have mind so still we understand that there is mind so the whole chapter the sixth chapter of bhagavad gita deals with the mind only in bhagavad gita. in in the bhagavad gita actually if you study and understand that understand that entire sixth chapter you understand how the mind works for a person who has conquered the mind the mind is the best of friends but for one who has failed to do so the mind will remain the worst enemy so there is a separate lecture which i have given many times in the past maybe in future at some point i can give it to you also so that is um how, how to control the restless mind or the law of mind all such things so it's so much of science here so we need to understand that that mind is is a subtle body because beyond similarly we say the intelligence but have we can we see the inter, it's not like the iq level we are measuring that is not intelligence the real intelligence i already explained to you having the knowledge of this bhagavad gita and acting as per the knowledge of bhagavad gita understanding the law of karma all such things i said about karma correct you are acting acting with your working senses but when we are acting with our working senses like the newton's third law of motion each and every action has got an equal and opposite reaction so here each and every action has got an equal and similar reaction when you are acting so that way this action is also we need to understand about the karma we need to be really really very careful when we do things so that's why uh, um, if our mind is a friend it will help us to do things act in a such a way it will help us to free ourselves from this bondage that we are going to study later okay so of, of course the false ego i already explained to you so in reality we are not doing it but we think that i am doing it so something goes great i did it something goes bad you did it all such things are not correct nobody did anything so that's what is known as false ego if we really did it if i said i did it so then we can say that we have ego so that's a true ego okay three modes of nature goodness passion and ignorance we can produce thousands and thousands of phd's on this topic alone and uh, this is such a very important science we need to understand and in bhagavad gita one verse krishna is saying that in the third chapter fifth verse 
there is not even a single moment one can refrain from doing something everyone is forced to act helplessly by the three modes of material nature nahi kashchit kshanam api jatu tistati akarma kar karyate hi avashyak karma sarvaga prakriti jaypune that's what krishna is so now we understood about the material nature so now totally all these things everything i said here in just in one verse krishna is saying just in one one four lines in one verse that's why this bhagavad gita is a science it is a king of knowledge so it is the most confidential knowledge king of knowledge purest knowledge topmost knowledge and which can be joyfully performed and it is um, all the time it is ever uh, ever existing knowledge time tested knowledge so in that krishna is saying just in four lines lord shri krishna is saying that mahabhutani अहंकार बुद्धि की अव्यक्तम एव च इंद्रियानि दश एकम च पञ्चैचेन्द्रिय गोचरा सो एवरीथिंग आई व्हाटएवर आई सेड हियर सो महाभूतानि मींस दिस फाइव ग्रेट एलिमेंट्स महाभूतानि एयर वाटर फायर एयर एंड स्पेस महाभूतानि अहंकार अहंकार मींस दिस फॉल्स ईगो सो महाभूतानि अहंकार बुद्धि की बुद्धि की मींस इंटेलिजेंस Mahabhutani ahankaro buddhi avyaktam means unmanifested. There is the three modes of material nature. Avyaktam indriyani dasa ekamcha. So dasa means ten, ekam means one. Ten plus one, eleven. So eleven senses. So that means it includes the mind. So one mind is the chief of all the senses, mind, and then these five knowledge acquiring senses and five working senses. That's why indriyani dasa ekamcha. then panchay chentriya gocharaga that means five sense objects so five sense objects that's what gocharaga so they are the sense objects so that's what in just in one verse just in four lines the science is given but which where we are studying who is teaching where the subject is start we are studying a lot of subjects we are we are working hard to get our degrees all those things are great but this is such a very very important science which is which is needed for everyone else for ourselves to understand about our life understand about our body so but we is teaching so but this is available we need to now you all got the opportunity so this is a great opportunity now we need to make use of it that's what is very important if you don't make use of it then we are the loser that's so if we make use of this knowledge then the benefits it's going to bring to us is so much even materially speak i guarantee that if we just follow this knowledge you can get all yes no doubt it is very much possible i myself have uh, like uh, did it i when i studied during my masters or my phd i really got excellent grades all the time yes and uh, i did my phd grade published enough uh, journal papers and uh, and even now i am working also uh, in the same field like i'm i didn't mention about uh, like i did my a uh, masters and phd in mechanical engineer so mtech from iit bombay and phd from iit madras so uh, computational fluid dynamics so that's what is my area of specialization so that's that involves all kinds of mathematics i know in general you go to mathematics up to calculus 1 2 3 and then maybe differential equations but you need to go even above that to understand all these complicated equations to solve and to do all these things so what i'm trying to say i'm not uh, bragging about myself but the fact is that the reality is that with this knowledge actually you can really do whatever you want so that much knowledge this one is okay so now the time so six changes to the grass body so what happens to our body first we are born here it comes into existence so then what is happening it is growing so the child then grows so our body grows so that means one thing i want to mention here that the body what we all of us here all of us in this in this room the body what we had at the time of death is not the same body what we are having right now if you get into a molecular level atomic level electron or proton neutron level so the body what we had at the time of death is not the same body is completely different 100 percentage it's different our parents body also like that one the for example the mother who gave birth to us our mothers so her body also now it is completely different 
we need to understand and the body assuming that we all live for very long time and then when we die the body what we will have at the time of death is going to be completely a different body than what we are having now in the atomic level i'm talking about so that science we need to understand so that's why this body comes into existence and grows and stays for some time so our height increases grows and then our height is staying for some time and it produces some effects we get children by products all such things and then we get old gradually dwindles and then vanishes into oblivion so that all these things these six changes to our body is just in four four points krishna is bringing that is janma mrityu jara vyadi so janma means birth so mrityu means death so birth and death in between jara and vyadi jara is old age and vyadi is disease you know in one line krishna is teaching in bhagavad gita that janma mrityu jara vyadi dukkha doshanu darshanam anyone who understands that birth old age disease and death to our body is our real problems that's what bring is bringing us all kinds of sufferings dukkha distress everything then that person is a knowledge everything else is ignorance krishna is saying that yet gnanam iti prokam agnanam yatutu anya if we don't understand if we don't realize that ourselves having this body and going through this birth old age disease and death so this is our real problems we need to try to solve these problems this is these are the problems we need to solve if we don't solve this problem of getting old getting but that means oh in this life it's a scientifically let me explore and find out a solution for becoming old or getting disease that's not going to happen nature has got its own way we need to understand we cannot think that i am very smart i can even send space, uh, satellites into space or even space travel is possible i can do lot of things this and that we can think but this one pandemic itself has taught at a lesson that we are all we can't even show our face that is a problem so we all with uh, with uh, masks and uh, all those things so we need to understand that we we are not really we cannot rule this well but like we cannot achieve a uh, immortal life in this body it is not possible we need to understand so this is our real problem okay now our main question comes here so until now i have explained for the last close to about 30 minutes 25 30 minutes about our body material nature correct everyone of us understood very clearly about our body but now the very important question comes here who am i okay am i the grass body can we say that i am the grass body no correct because we already told that the body changed completely changed still we think we are the same person still we think our degree is still old school so maybe in my case i got my phd uh, maybe 20 plus years ago 23 years ago so still uh, my body is completely changed but still i hold my phd degree so all such things are same so whatever the social security number you got at the time of your birth it's still the same so nothing is changing so but body has changed so that's what we need to understand so am i the grass body then no they are not giving value they are not they they are not giving the uh, as i said the social security number or the driving license or anything to the body they are giving to not giving to the body we need to understand okay and am i the subtle body mind intelligence and false ego and am i the material nature am i am i made up of this Uh, um, uh, elements what you see in the periodic table so the answer is no so everyone agrees that anyone disagree here on this this particular important thing? the answer is no we are not part of this so then who am i okay i am not this body then who am i so i am the soul now now we need to understand very clearly there is something in our body which is actually not changing at all right from birth to death 
it is always the same so we are giving we, when we say when we give respect to a person we are giving that respect to the soul not to the body we need to understand when we are talking to someone when we are doing interacting everything we are not to the body but to the soul that's what we need to understand so the soul purpose of this knowledge itself is to understand that we are the soul so we need to get this knowledge so when i am the soul i am not this body then should i know more about myself are we spending how much time in our life every day we are spending for ourselves now we understood ourselves i am the soul but how much time we are thinking or we are spending or how much we know about ourselves now zero correct if you don't have this knowledge if you are not if you don't have this knowledge we are not spending any time about taking care of ourselves we are all the time trying to take care of the needs of our body but not the soul not ourselves so that means do we have intelligence no we don't have any intelligence an intelligent person will get with the knowledge of this bhagavad gita will try to do everything to take care of ourselves that's what is very important so that way which is superior to dull matter the i am the soul which is superior to dull matter now everything is given in just this one slide what i have just explained so the self the soul is at the center and then the subtle body mind intelligence and ego and then the grass body earth water fire air and space all those things are there so we need to understand this very clearly and our day to day activities daily activities should be based on this knowledge if you don't have this knowledge then what is the difference between ourselves and the animals we may think that i am great i can win this prize and uh, i can become great big and i can earn so much and all such things but at the time of death it doesn't matter whether we are a billionaire or a beggar it doesn't make any difference it doesn't make any difference if we are in a very five star hospital and uh, and in the death bed in, in in a bed with all kinds of electronic instruments everything is hooked on us and everything is monitored our blood pressure heart rate and everything are you a beggar on the street dying or even a dog which is on the street dying it doesn't make any difference we need to understand it so that way this life this human life is very very invaluable it's very very precious opportunity we should not offer to lose this opportunity what we have got we need to understand about ourselves and get this knowledge of bhagavad gita and act and do things which are beneficial for ourselves if we are not doing it that means we are missing the boat that means we are it's it's going it, it, there is there are no other ways to explain about that thing okay the law of conservation of soul what is the law of conservation of energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be changed from one form into another we study and we apply all such things we know the law of conservation of mass mass also can neither be created nor be destroyed energy can neither be created nor be destroyed similarly soul can neither be created nor be destroyed that is the law of conservation of soul so that soul is there inside this body all the time so the sky which is pervading everywhere doesn't mix with anything so similarly the soul which is pervading this entire body doesn't mix with the body that's what we need to understand yatha sarvagatam saukshmat akasham nopalipyate sarvatra avasthita dehe tatatma nopalipyate so it's very easy to understand we have soul we are soul we are not the body we are inside this body and this body is the soul doesn't mix with the body so that way soul can neither be created nor be destroyed it can only be transmigrated from one body to another at the time of death na jayate mriyate va kadasin nayam bhutva bhavitsa vana bhuyaga ajo nityaga sasvato yam puranu na hanyate hanyamani sarire when this body is destroyed the soul is not destroyed so now having understood so much we cannot expect our scientists to come out say that there is soul or there is no soul we are stupid if we look for the our science to prove the soul because science cannot prove the soul science can't prove the soul 
because the soul is invisible you can see things you can see things only which are visible which which can send uh, uh, the light we need to, to see anything whether you are seeing through telescope or whether you are seeing through microscope or whatever it is it has to finally it has to the light has to go and hit our retina the photons the photons have to go and hit our retina and the photoreceptors should sense then only we can see it but the soul is beyond matter the soul is spiritual that's why you call it as a spiritual entity it doesn't emit light on its own it doesn't reflect light it is beyond so that way it does not reflect light doesn't reflect light is invisible and it doesn't produce any sound the soul make doesn't make any sound and it is odorless the soul doesn't produce smell and it is tasteless it doesn't taste so it is it cannot be touched so that way with none of our five knowledge acquiring senses you can perceive the soul so that way if you are ask if you are expecting the science to prove that so that way no scientist and nobody in the world can say that we are the soul so that way we cannot simply say that oh today we have advanced so much in our science and technology and nobody is talking about the soul i don't believe in soul who is going to be at last it's our self if we don't even after understanding so clearly that our body is keep on changing our we are not the body so yet dehinosmin yatha dehe kaumaram yavvanam jara tatha dehantara praptir dhira satrana mukhyate kaumaram means a childhood body you uh, the boyhood body and yavvanam means youthhood body and jara means old age body so the soul is transmigrating within the body from the boyhood to youth and youth to old age similarly at the time of death it gets another body so now this question of rebirth reincarnation is very clearly answered here so we are already reincarnating in this life itself we need to understand we are already there is a rebirth reincarnation in this life itself because our body is completely changed if you have a friend and they uh, then they studied uh, and, um, like fifth grade so now maybe after like 50 years if you see him or if he were friends is you you can't even recognize at all the body completely changed that is the fact so we that means we already died this body what we had at the child that body died are we crying for that no and this body is going to die and the at the old age also we are going to die i don't know whether this will play or not so let me um, this is ppt so maybe instead of putting it in this slide so Is it's a very nice video. I just, but I, I don't know why it goes to. Is it PowerPoint show? I thought it's a PPT. Anyway, it's a it's a nice video. So that's why. Okay, so, I I think maybe I will try to. at the end if i am possible i will try to do it and and play we will come back come back to that at the end i will do that okay that's fine we'll go to it okay matter can't destroy soul so matter whatever this material nature matter it cannot destroy the soul no weapon no sharp weapon nothing laser weapon this nothing can destroy the soul nainam chintanti sastran nainam dakati pavaka nachainam kledayanti aap nasoseyati marutaka so that means the earth water fire air all these things cannot do anything to the soul so that's what we need to understand 
so the soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon soul can never be dissolved by water soul can never be burned by fire soul can never be withered by wind so earth water fire air and space solid liquid heat and gas nothing can do anything to the soul okay same soul changing body at the boyhood we are the same soul i already mentioned at the youth we are the same soul we are the same same person at the old body that means same person so similarly new body after death same soul the soul is the same so as a person puts on new garments giving up the old ones the soul similarly accepts new material bodies giving up the old and useless ones so that's what we need to understand so um, that is actually vasamsi jeenani yatha vigaya navani grihanati naruparan whenever garments gets old and useless we'll throw away and get a new garment so similarly when our body becomes old and useless the soul will change to so get a new body so at the time of death when we get old one should be happy that he is going to get a new body so again we can start running and doing all those things i'm talking about the people at the very old age not for us uh, not, at least not for you even i am also getting old so okay three modes of nature bind the soul with the body so that's the reality of current life so this is the thing our body first of all itself is created by these three modes of nature satvam rajas tama iti gunah prakriti sambhavah nibandhanandi mahabahu dehe deginam avvi so these three modes of material nature are binding the soul inside the body and then the soul identify identifies itself with the body and foolishly thinks that it is a doer of all activities due to false ego we think that i am doing you are doing all those things but in reality the modes of nature is carrying out all activities that's what we need to understand we already understood the three modes of material nature is doing all the activities so the soul suffers life after life with six senses which include the mind due to the forceful control of the material modes of nature so this is not happening in this life life after life after life after life after life after life after i can keep on saying that life after life after we are repeatedly taking birth old age disease and death. that's what we need to understand so jatyasya ki durvo mrityur durvam janma mrityasya when a person is born is sure to die similarly when a person dies is sure to born again so that is the fact we need to understand so that means we are all going to when we die it's sure we are going to die and we are going to take that see it's all based on the science this is not based on any other sentiments or, or simply uh, sentimental faith or religious things it's not it's completely based on science science is science physics is physics physics doesn't belong to any particular religion or chemistry doesn't belong so everywhere it's applicable so whatever i am explaining here it's applicable to everyone whether we believe it or not we are the soul so that way death is just an event of the change of body by the soul the soul carries a subtle body along with different conceptions of life from one gross body to another as the air carries aromas so the soul obtains a new body with certain type of air, air eye tongue nose and sense of touch which are grouped about the mind so everything depends upon our mind at the time of death what kind of body next body we are going to get it all depends upon what we are remembering at the time of death so yam yam vaapi smaran bhavam tejatyam te kalevaram whatever one remembers at the time of death he will get it that's it. so there is um um srotram chakshuvu sparsanam rasanam granam evacha adisthaya manaschayam vishayan upasevat so shrotram means ears chakshugu eyes rasanam shrotram chakshugu rasanam means uh, the tongue uh, sparsanam sparsanam means the skin rasanam means the tongue and then um, granam means the nose all these things what kind of body we are going to get it all depends upon what we are remembering at the time of death so the law of birth and death so death is certain for one who has taken birth asura as death birth is also certain after death okay now life after death so this is a if and if then else kind of a loop like a, 
we normally do in the programming i know i am i'm a person who studied programming uh, when i was uh, doing photon i don't know nana in a, if any of you know about photon program so for engineering everything i started with photon 77 that was the thing i used photon 77 photon 90 but i know now all this uh, python and all those things have come and before that java c c++ all such things but this is this should be there in all the programming this this is flow chart what i'm putting it is a flow chart so in the flow chart so at the time of that a question is asked is the soul liberated from the modes of nature it's very straightforward question are we freed from the modes of nature we know that we are all controlled by the modes of nature we are not so if the question answer is yes we are freed from the modes of nature then freedom from old age disease and death then we goes to we go to spiritual world there is another world which is beyond this material universe material universe itself is so huge billions of solar systems in a given galaxy our own galaxy milky way galaxy billions of suns are there and there are billions of galaxies are there when we say billions we can't even image so we are talking about so we can say billions time billions is what it will go much much more than the trillions we are talking about the budget in terms of trillions billions all those things correct billion or trillion it's much so many uh, the universe material universe itself is so vast but the soul can go to the spiritual well when we are freed from the modes of it so the foolish cannot understand how we are living entity can quit his body nor can they understand what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature but one whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see all this so if we have the eyes of knowledge jnana chakshuru we can see okay summary i'm not this body i'm the soul i'm always existing there is no birth and death for me i am bound to the body by three modes of material nature i am not doing any activity all the activities are forcefully carried out through me by the three modes of nature due to false ego i i foolishly think that i am doing all the activities the goal of my life is to get liberation from the three modes of nature and attain a permanent blissful life which is free from old age disease and death so that means we should no longer be forced to accept this temporary miserable material body that shri krishna is explaining this material world as dukkhalayam asaswatam dukkhalayam means it is full of its distress dukkhalayam asaswatam means it's temporary so miserable so this material world is a temporary miserable place our life is temporary and miserable and krishna's well is sukhalayam sasvatam spiritual well so it's a permanently blissful place so we should live in a permanent blissful place not in this temporary miserable place but if we don't take steps in that regard this cycle will continue forever this cycle will continue forever so that's what is uh, that's what is going to happen so it is continuing it's continuing forever when i say that life death then again life death and again repeat of life that if i if i keep on saying that for the next one hour will you all sit here and simply very patiently will you be able to listen to that if i simply say that just for one hour if i say this cycle death then old age then disease and death and then again birth and death old age disease and death birth old age disease and death birth old age disease if i keep on saying like this you you think that i'm i'm i i gone mad correct so that's what is happening in our life really actually we are going through this forever so how are you going to put a stop to this so take this knowledge if you take this knowledge we can put a stop and krishna has given the statistics in bhagavad gita only one in 1000 will endeavor for perfection will take this opportunity so that means 999 out of 1000 is going to go through this cycle that's very unfortunate and we are all fortunate that one in thousand you got the opportunity and get this and then life is going to be very very peaceful so bhagavad gita is the shining lamp of knowledge which destroys the darkness of ignorance so raja vidya raja gukhyam pavitram uttamam pratyaksha vagamam dharmam susukam kartum avyam so it is the king of knowledge most confidential knowledge purest knowledge everlasting knowledge 
knowledge which gives direct perception of the self knowledge which is joyfully performed so i wish to thank lord sri krishna for giving bhagavad gita to this world and acknowledge sila prabhupada for his book bhagavad gita as it is so through which i can i understood everything so now i am also giving lecture every day in fact uh um, daily i teach daily i spend 3 hours in teaching bhagavad gita one hour in the morning in my native language tamil and then two hours in the evening every day evening 9 to today also i have after this is almost 8:30 so i uh, i'll start at 9:30 so at two hours it will go so i will give lecture only for 30 minutes but people will ask questions for another one and a half hours i will all over the world from india all parts of india us canada singapore everywhere uh, there are people they join at least 50 60 are joining every day so you can also take benefit and you can join uh, if you have, maybe you can check with me i uh, i can add you into that group at the end if you want you can give me your numbers to me and your contacts and also i am here also every sunday i come here and give the uh, this lecture also so uh, in 401 rather 401 morning 10 to uh, 12 this sunday also so you can take benefit of that also so that way you can get this knowledge so any questions now before i, I go and ask for questions um as a testimonial i just want to play one video here i hope this video will play the effect of this knowledge many persons i teach i never seen them by face but only in zoom but it is just on i hope it plays i am just some my friends my name is rajan ram i used to worship god in a more passionate very passionate way this may be the experience to experience the life one day i am in goria i was in the greatest joy the next day if i lose something especially as my father passed away in the greatest i went to a deep sorrow i was crying i wept for more than one and a half years i couldn't come out of it my god's grace one of my lecturers mr jayesh darshan introduced me to father krishnan konadar swami so he started taking the bhagavad gita classes after attending these classes there was a complete transformation happened in me mr bhagavad krishnan konadar swami has been teaching portion bhagavad gita every shloka in a very pragmatic manner how we should worship the god So how we should worship the Lord Krishna? He also taught me Krishna is expansion of everything in the universe. We are all child of Krishna. I have attended the Bhagavad Gita class. Now I realize the real bliss, external bliss, especially chanting the Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. This mantra gives me a true bliss. I am experiencing Krishna in every walks of my life. So I would like to recommend all of you please chant this mantra mantra and experience the bliss. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and you all. Thank you very much to Mr. Prabhu, Mr. Prabhu, who has been assisting my journey, Mr. Balak Sen Bhandaras. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, to all of you. Yeah, he is uh, just uh, he is in Singapore and um, he is working uh, in a multinational company there as an executive. But uh, this knowledge benefits. It's just a situation there, like that. There are many many persons who are uh, in contact with me, and um, this is a great uh, knowledge. Now it's open to questions. I know uh, I took a lot of time, but this science is very much needed. Correct. So like it's almost like a like a two. Uh, classes a week correct like three credit if you take two classes one hour 10 minutes correct so like that we took so now i'll open it if you have any questions uh, quickly maybe yes please so uh, we discussed that the soul can be like we discussed like what is soul and all together but Uh, I didn't get the point where where we uh, partially like uh, understood what defines soul. Like what is soul? You get to the point where yeah, you 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 track the whole lecture tracks out like okay, yeah, everything is scientifically proven that at, at the point where it comes to soul, it comes not from the science. It comes at that point. It comes to faith. Like you know, you have to take a leap there, and you're like, okay, no, this is science is there. We 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 our, our body is defined by science, and every Every matter that we we live around, it's all the material matter that we sit on, or or or, or we feel, or, or whatever is there, could be defined. But then again, that leap of leap of faith that we take to soul, how would you explain?
to define, I, are we actually talking about consciousness that defines our soul or, or, or is something else which is beyond our consciousness that is soul? So could you like... Uh, yeah, if you actually uh, take that book, uh, second chapter, 11th verse to 38th verse, 20 verses, slokas, continuously, it's very, very clearly explained, talks about the soul only. So, but for your question, I'll just briefly explain to you, but that is about that, okay? So, what today in this session, we have understood very clearly that we are not the body. That is clear. So, there is no doubt about it. So we are the soul. We give, we say the soul. The name is the soul. We are not the body. So now, if you, your question is to understand more about the uh, soul, so we need to understand this knowledge more and more. Like, like senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is above the senses. Intelligence is above the mind, and say, and uh, soul is above the intelligence. So a lot of uh, things. All this it has got eighteen chapters and seven hundred verses. So if you understood everything all the chapters, all the signs, then you will be able to understand. It is something like um, electrons. Nobody has seen electrons. Even scientists, no scientist has seen electrons. No one has seen electrons. But we know that it is there, correct? We know it's electromagnetic radius, all properties, everything we under, we understood so much and we are applying that uh, science and we are able to do all these things. If we didn't believe in uh, the existence of electrons, we are not here. We are not doing all these things. So like that, here, if you understand that we are the soul, nobody has seen the soul, but the electrons itself, we know that it's a matter, it has got negligible, it doesn't even have mass, correct? You don't even give a mass, only protons and neutrons you give, uh, electrons you give only charge. It has got a negative charge of one, which neutrons doesn't have, uh, but protons have a positive charge, and the electrons have no charge, no mass. It has got, yeah. That's correct. It's a, it's a, it's a theory in the sense with your, I already explained today, with our senses, we cannot perceive. So then you can say whatever you want. If you want to say it as a theory, you can say it as a theory. Because I very, very clearly mentioned that you cannot perceive with the sense. So then it comes to the matter of faith. As you said, it's a matter of faith. Those who believe in will, will get the benefit. You yourself can feel uh, uh, the effect in this life itself, when you believe in the existence of soul, that we are not the body, we are the soul, and if you follow, if you practice the science and everything, you will be able to see a tremendous change in your life. Like happiness, first of all. This Bhagavad Gita, in one line, Krishna is asking a question and also giving the answer. Ashantasya kutas sukam. Ashantasya kutas sukam. Means, when there is no peace of mind, where from happiness comes? Question is there, answer also is there. So happiness is simply defined as the status of our mind. It's not that today suddenly if I win a big lottery, I will be happy, not like. It's only if our mind is not disturbed, I'm happy. That's for mind. So Bhagavad Gita is teaching that, teaching that science about how to achieve that full happiness. So that way, if you study Bhagavad Gita, I guarantee that we will be happy. You understood that? So it, it, I think these things we need to continue more. Uh, maybe then you will understand. And also, uh, like, to add on to what you said, since you see there are many, uh, in fact, uh, many studies have been conducted on uh, uh, incarnation of people, like people who have been reborn and they have passed their senses, passed their senses, and they are able to remember that aspect. So, how are they able to remember? Like, you know?
also go both with the sword. I mean, it's attacked, right? It's like if we had this like sword, the subtle body and the cross body. So the cross body when we die, the cross body is here. Right? But when we say that the person has passed away, so who has passed away? The body is still there. So who has passed away? So it's the soul which is leaving the body. And then how the soul also leaves the body is also mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Like, you know, and the spiritually elevated people, the souls, like, you know, their soul always moves on the top of the head and stuff. And then the mind base now always moves on the head. So, the soul leaves, the subtle body leaves. It's like a memory chip, you know. So, all your activities and everything, the cardio activities, everything is recorded in that uh, subtle body, which goes. And again, when the soul is reborn, or uh, takes a reincarnation, like, if, if the soul gets a human form of body, then the, again the person continues based on the karma. But not necessarily the person will get a human form of the body. That is the big thing. Right? Not necessarily. That again depends on the karma and everything. It's a chain reaction. Uh, so this is one thing. Is, so the time of death, the soul definitely uh, starts my place. The big body, human body, animal body, and the body. So this is how you can pursue. Yeah, it needs actually more time. That is the main thing. Today, what we have done is just in like uh, it's an introductory. You know, this takes. And realization. This is the knowledge. This is so we actually realize that yeah, we are the we are not the body, we are the soul, and that is what science of self realization is. People now spend entire lives like you know understanding or, or realizing this only as good. Like, we are not the body, but we are the soul, and that's what they are called self realization. Right. What, the, what does that mean? Self realization. Self realized. Because now they have actually realized we are right now at the knowledge level. It is okay. We are not the body, we are the soul. But to actually realize and perceive that we are not the body and the soul, this is also gets like a different level. Because even if there is a death in your family or something, you lose somebody. You know, if a person has this knowledge that we are not the body, we are the soul, and the soul is definitely eternal. Ever, you know, not to be killed by anything. So the soul is going to transmigrate to different bodies. But people who have realized this knowledge do not get disturbed by, even when there is a death in a family or they lose a, a loved one, they do not get disturbed because they have that knowledge. And this knowledge of not of knowing that we are not the body, but the soul and the soul transmigrates, it, it really helps uh, during those difficult times as well. I think to a certain extent you understood, correct? Maybe it needs more. The one thing is that it's not possible to uh, uh, understand everything in just in one, one lesson. But what we understand today's session is that we are not the body, we are the soul. But now you are, your question is more about what is the soul. That's a very good question. But for that, we need to uh, continue explore, studying this knowledge. Then you will understand. That's the answer. So there, is that part clear to you? Thank you for asking that question. Yeah. So, yeah, please. I also have a question about the soul. So we go through cycles until we realize we are not lesson Yes. That's a very, uh, again, another important question, but unfortunately, I don't have the answer. And uh, even this book also doesn't give the answer for that. So the question is that originally, how we ended up here? That's your question. How we are in. Why did the soul originally separate? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. So, so that part, actually, we don't know the answer. There is no answer given. But one thing we know that we are suffering. We are struggling. We are in this material well. Now we, we have the answer for solving the, our current problem. So whatever your question you asked is a very valid question. I, I'm not saying that it's, uh, it's not a valid question, but unfortunately there is no answer. And even finding an answer for that now also is, is not going to be very helpful, helpful in the sense for us to definitely get rid of this material nature, free ourselves from the modes of nature. It is like when the house is under fire, so we have to just escape first. 
first we need to save ourselves and then you will try to find out the source of the fire correct when the house is under fire we cannot figure it out what caused the fire all those things there is there is no time uh, to do that so something like that here just because i, I so you ask a valid question i don't have answer for that and even this book doesn't give an answer for that but we know that we are in a miserable temporary miserable place this book gives an answer for the solution for this problem so once we solve this problem maybe when we meet with the uh, supreme lord we can ask this question to get the answer for that but right now yeah yes Yes. You you said when the soul leaves the body, it's individual, and what is separating them? That's what you are asking. What separates my soul from your soul? Oh, okay. You are asking about what is separate. No, not with the impermanence. Let's both die now. Mm -hmm. And our souls. What keeps them separate? Yeah, because. the what we are understanding from this bhagavad gita that each and every soul is on its own and individual so natvevaham jatu nasam natvam neme janadipaga na chaiva na bhavishyamaga sarve vayam atah param the second chapter 12th verse krishna is saying that there was never a time when i did not exist nor you nor all these people who are assembled there kings there so nor in the future shall any of us cease to exist so we our existence is permanent it is eternal always it is there there was never a time when i did not exist na the, the another thing is that na jayate mriyate va kalash nayam bhutva bhavita vana puyaka the soul did not come into being it does not come into being it will not come into being it's always there the soul is always there so even after we both die at the same time the soul is going the soul is again get into another body depending upon what i remember at the time of death what you remember at the time of so whatever we remember so yam yam vaapi smaran bhavam tajatyante kalivram tam tam eviti kaunde and once we are freed from the material well you are also freed from the modes of nature i am also freed from the modes of nature when we leave so krishna is teaching us that you will reach a place having gone you will not come back so that place there is no sun no moon no fire nothing that's why anything you see in the star light and everything we are seeing the light they are all material wells so the spiritual well krishna is saying that natat bhashyate suryo na sasanko na pavaka yadgatva na nivartante taddama paramam mama so anyone who comes to my place they will not come back here so that's what he says so we'll go there and krishna is also is saying that it's a saswatam padam it's a permanent abode and it uh, there are no miseries anamayam anamayam means there is no miseries there is sukha shekanti tasya there is only full of happiness so that's why brahmanohi pratishtagam sasvatasya dharmasya that is amurtasya avyasya cha sasvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya ekanti tasya so that is the place you go there and you enjoy there forever but uh, if we are not released free from the modes of nature then we will keep circling in this vast material universe so but but for your question that's that's the answer actually based on the science science of world The, the the individuality is there all the time for the soul we will not lose our identity at any point of time based on bhagavad gita no work is In fact, uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying that you need to consider everybody as the same. You should not see us the separate. That's correct. So, see, all all these answers you can get once we are free. That's the main. Thing. and 
then it takes a birth, like then it takes a human form of a life. So that's why it's also said a human form of a life is a very, very rare and very special form of a life, different from animals. Because we have evolved to almost how many species to take a human form of life. And then there's the reason that human form of life is only meant for uh, like you know, like getting this knowledge and getting out of this world where it is breaking this cycle permanently. And then again, Bhagavad Gita teaches how to break this cycle. So this is how your questions should like, you know, every time we get into a different thing, your question will also be like, now what? Now what next? So what happens to this? Where does it go? Which then? How is the size? Yeah, I think only answer for all the questions is the complete knowledge of this power. If you know the full knowledge, then everything will be answered. There is 18 chapters, 700 verses. If you understood each and every verse, then all the questions you will get. It. So that is the main thing. So, if you were to ask the same question, where did it come from? So, similarly, like the energy that is in the universe contains a vast amount of energy matter. But then again, where did it come from? We, we do have a theory that we have a theory that it's like that happens in the universe. Why not simply say that the same thing for the soul? Then again, it's all just a theory. We really don't have the thing about the soul. Then again, it's all just a theory. We really are still talking about uh, like the like, uh, uh, specific example was like the uh, uh, you know, one that I've written, it's like your house is on fire, you can go ahead and take care of the fire instead of talking about the fire comes The similar thing is like the matter, the energy, the, the matter is already existing right now. Now we are here to realize that okay, it is here, it's up to us how to use it or how to like self realize it. Thus, effectively, it's a platform for the stuff. No, all, all these things are all assumptions. Whatever you are saying, everything, uh, because we don't know. That's it. No, but isn't it, it's in the dormant state and then the... No, this dormant state is continuing also forever. You know, that I didn't go to, I didn't go to that part. If that will take a lot of time to explain that um, uh, Sagasra Yuga Pariyantam Aharya Brahmano Vidu Ratri Yuga Sagasrantam Tego Ratra Vidu Janaga. So that is, uh, that is another big science. If you go through that, like thousand ages of uh, uh, in this Kali Yuga, this Yuga. So that, that will take a lot of time to explain. So there is known as one day in Brahma's world, 12 hours. So when Brahma's night falls, everything gets annihilated. Then again, everything is created. So again, everything annihilated, everything created. So another, that is equal to 4.32 billion years. Uh, this earth will be there and then it, it gets annihilated. So like that, right now the current age of this earth itself is 4.32 billion years. So it's all an order of magnitude, it's exactly matching. And next 4.32 billion years, this earth won't be there at all. Not even 4.3, another 1 billion year itself, we don't know what's going to happen to this earth. Sun is expanding, it's expanding many times, the earth will be swallowed, the sun itself will become a dwarf sun. So it will lose, it will, all its fuel will be burnt out. That's it. Then afterwards, no more light will be coming from the sun. So without sun's light, there is no energy here, correct? So all these things, it's, everything is uh, expanded. So that way, it all goes annihilated, created, annihilated, created. That is known as Prabhavam, Pralayam, Prabhavam, Pralayam. So during the Pralayam, another 4.32 billion years, we will not have body at all. The soul will be, in, as uh, Mataji just said, that will be in a dormant state. Then again, next 4.32 billion years, you'll keep changing bodies, bodies. Then another 4.32 billion, that's all Brahma's day and night. 
பிரபவதி அகராகமி ராத்திரி ஆகமி பிரலீயந்தே சோ தட்ஸ்வை பூத்தகிராமக சயேவாயம் பூத்வா பூத்வா பிரலீயதே சோ எவ்ரி திங் இஸ் கிரியேட்டட் அனிகிலேட்டட் கிரியேட்டட் அனிகிலேட்டட் கிரியேட்டட் அனிகிலேட் So, but there is another place, Paragat Tasmat Bhavonyo, Avyakto Vyakta Sanatana. So, there is another place that is not getting disturbed at all. Avyakto Kshara Ityukta Tamagugu Paramam Bethim. So, that is known as the supreme destination. So, that's what we should be there. If we are there, then we are not going to be bothered. So, yeah, if we study and understood everything, we will understand. So, it's, it takes a lot of time, uh, but uh, we need to consider this as a credit course, okay? so every week at least take maybe one credit course consider this and study and take this knowledge if you want to take it as a six credit course i'm giving six days a week every day one one verse you can join my zoom also you can get six credits okay thank you So, uh, I think we are looking at 9 p.m. So, I won't say much, but uh, just try to read the philosophy. It's more like your own realizations. So, you know, like, you, you, you get a chance to do everything out there, right? Like, you, you read every other book. Uh, why not try reading this? And see for yourself, what do you realize? And it will be best to read from a person who has, like, 30 years of experience. So he has been at, in your shoes exactly at your uh, pace. So uh, he has walked uh, the entire way. So now I think it will be best to like, follow him and see uh, see how it, where it takes you. And of course, we have uh, opportunities for reading it uh, here in our club as well. So like Friday 6 30 to 7, you can always join us and uh, discuss. So Abhi is already doing that. So she has like, some very interesting questions all the time. And, I'm, I'm like a scared person, like uh, reading it out there, but she, she does a very good job in asking those questions and like having that right discussion. So, you know, like you're always in the position where you want to learn more. So that's how we, we read anything, right? Whenever you read a new concept, you try to learn it. You know, like uh, they say, like the, pe- the stupid has all the answers. So, uh, yeah, we are probably not stupid. <laughs> What's that? Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is not bliss. <laughs> That's the worst. Uh, ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is dangerous. <laughs> so, yeah. knowledge, knowledge is blissful. Yeah. So, I think uh, whoever came with ignorance is bliss was a very lazy person. <laughs> he didn't want to go out there <laughs> and see what is out there. So, yeah. Um, we are moving forward because we are not ignorant, right? So, Yeah, let's uh, let's be that way. Let's be curious. Let's try to understand whatever is out there. Or just materially, they are doing that. But otherwise, as well. So let's not take more time. And, uh, we have uh, Prashadam sir, and we have the room like up to nine thirty. So you guys can stay around. And, uh, so should I talk about all the interesting questions that we ask and see if you can get the answers? Mm-hmm. Come tell us. Also. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Uh, and uh, i am i am teaching this entire course uh, in 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 the next few weeks uh, like if you are interested you can come you can give me your contact number uh, so sunday morning 10 to 12 uh, in the red dot 401 you can come and join yes. yeah, because i am able to come here only on sundays that's why i am able to come here Yeah, only on Sundays I'm able to come. Otherwise, I can come here on Fridays. Earlier, I used to come here on Fridays and do that. We started this meeting on Fridays, Saturdays, 10 to 11. We are still not charged for the first chapter. So... Yeah, so Prashant is a certain program. And you can follow the line. Okay, push out the monitor time and then of course let us know if you have any food allergies or if you are a vegan, like please let us know as well. So, 